WWE Survivor Series is live from the Allstate Arena in Chicago. Get ready for those CM Punk chants. Yeah, they, it's funny, they had died down a little bit in recent years. Uh, I'm sure you'll be hearing them more now, and they're in Chicago. Although they were in Chicago last night, I think there was one CM Punk chant, and I think it came during the uh, Balor-Matt Riddle match. Uh, so maybe it won't be too bad, but as I look at this card, I see the WWE Championship match which I have an interest in, with Rey Mysterio and Brock Lesnar. I think the build to that has been very good. I see The Fiend defending the Universal title against Daniel Bryan. The build has been lacking a little bit, but I'm looking forward to the match itself. I think the triple threat with Styles, Strong, and Nakamura could steal the show, if they're given enough time. Seeing Becky Lynch and Shayna Baszler in the ring together is something I pitched months ago is an idea that I'd like to see playing off the uh, history or the friendship between Baszler and Ronda Rousey and there's a backstory there it isn't just the fact that Becky's the top dog in the women's division Shane has been the top dog in the NXT women's division and now she's coming in to knock off the number one seed I mean that could be the story all by itself but I think it would be kind of uh, cool to tie it into uh, the history there in terms of who Becky beat to become the champion in the first place. So I don't know if they would go down that road or not, but I'm glad that we're finally going to see these two in the ring, not one-on-one, -on -one, but we'll get to see them in the same match. So I'm looking forward to that. And now they've added an NXT Championship match. For the first time ever at Survivor Series, that title is going to be defended because there was no championship match last night at War Games. The weekly television, though, on Raw and SmackDown, building up to this, has been so hit or miss. It has been largely more miss than hit, but it's been so inconsistent, and some weeks so boring and repetitive. The same little invaders come in, and they run in, and the big bro... I mean, how many weeks in a row can you do the same thing? Now, Raw had some good wrestling this week, but it was still tough to sit through. Friday SmackDown show, that was at least an improvement over the week before, but it would be impossible to be any worse than the last two weeks before that, or the last two weeks period of King Corbin in the ring with doggy poop bags and the dog man in the furry costume. So, of course, SmackDown was going to be an improvement this week. How could it not be? But as I look at this card, and I look at all the interbrand elimination matches, well, I guess there's only two, but the interbrand elimination matches, imagine. Imagine if NXT wasn't included in this year's show. If we just had some Raw people and some SmackDown people invading back and forth, how lame that would have felt. To be honest with you, by this week, even with the NXT stuff, you know, they're also invading and they're coming out there. Even this week, it was long in the tooth at this point. They've done it so many times. After a while, what does it really mean? They, they've killed... <laughs> It's funny, you know, I think back to that SmackDown show after the Saudi Arabia debacle and they had to flood the show with NXT talent and how fresh it felt and what a fun show that was. And here we are now, what, three weeks later? And we've seen it so many times, it just means nothing. This whole, oh, they're, oh here they are again. All right, well, hey, it's like we saw it the week before. So they've gone to the well so many times now. Thank God Survivor Series is tonight. I don't think I could take another week of this. But just imagine these shows, these Raw and SmackDown shows these last few weeks without the NXT talent. I mean, NXT has been positioned less, you know, not NXT rather, Survivor Series has been positioned less as Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT and more as a handicap match. Raw and SmackDown really against NXT, that's kind of what it feels like. It doesn't really feel like a triple threat, it feels like a handicap match. NXT has never been portrayed before as being on equal footing with Raw or SmackDown. Now they're on USA Network. They're live every Wednesday night. They're staking their claim. But it's going to feel silly after all the brand feuding that we've been seeing when Survivor Series is over and then things go right back to the way they were and everybody's all just in their own little sandbox. You know, the timing of the draft could not have been worse. To tell people, well, we're really going to split the brands this time, only to have four weeks of brand mixing at all of the shows. And now we're going to go back to Raw only, and SmackDown only, and NXT only. 
And remember, we're about to head into a dead period anyway. This holiday season, it's always just an insignificant dead period. Although it may be worse than usual this time. Until we get to the Royal Rumble and then finally things start to pick up. But let's run through this here. We have a traditional Survivor Series elimination match. Team Raw, led by Charlotte Flair, with Natalia, Asuka, Kairi Sane, and Sarah Logan. Against Team SmackDown, led by Sasha Banks, Nikki Cross, Lacey Evans, Carmella, and Dana Brooke. Versus Team NXT. With Rhea Ripley as the team captain, and as announced last night during the TakeOver post-show, her partners will be Candice LeRae, who was her partner in the War Games match last night, the only partner that was there for her at all, Io Shirai, who was one of her opponents, Bianca Belair, who was another one of her opponents, and Tony Storm, who she said she's known since their days together, you know, down in Australia, good friends, she's known Tony since she was 16 years old, she's 23 now, so, I mean, that's not that long, but Tony Storm rounds out the... NXT team at Survivor Series, the same Tony Storm who made her main roster debut in underwhelming fashion on Friday night, hopping the barricade, standing next to all the other women. I do have to say, I loved the finish to that triple threat women's match on SmackDown Friday night with all three team captains squaring off. Charlotte had Sasha trapped in the figure eight. Ripley slid in underneath, so Charlotte has the bridge going, and Ripley slides in underneath and used a... I guess it was like a, a crucifix-style pin. Had Charlotte's shoulders pinned to the match. She couldn't go anywhere, and she won the match. And all the while, Sasha is still trapped in the leg lock. I thought that was a cool finish. Whoever came up with that, thumbs up. Now, Sarah Logan. Sarah Logan has not been seen on television, it feels like, in months. At least not on the main shows. Maybe she's been wrestling on main event every week. But Sarah Logan being picked for uh, Team Raw, that came out of nowhere. And my first thought when I when I heard that Sarah Logan was going to be the pick, totally random. If you're going to throw somebody totally random in this match, what about her old Riot Squad partner? What the hell is going on with Liv Morgan? Where's she been? It's been four months since we've seen Liv Morgan on TV. It was July when we saw her on SmackDown in a, a two-minute match lose to Charlotte Flair. And then they shot this little angle when the match was over where she was very upset and very emotional. She literally snatched the headset right off of Corey Graves' head, which automatically makes her a babyface in my book. And she said, when I come back, I'm going to be real. You're going to see the real Liv Morgan. And she threw the headset down. It looked like she was crying. And she walked off. And I was intrigued. For the first time, I actually found myself interested in what they were going to do with frickin' Liv Morgan. And then she vanished. <laughs> Never to be seen again on television. I mean, she's all over social media and stuff. I mean, it's not like it would have been uh, 20 or 30 years ago where they're off TV and you truly don't know what's going on with these people. There's almost a bit of mystique to it. Now there's no mystique anymore. The mystique is dead. The mystique is long dead. You can't, I mean, look, even The Fiend, The Fucking Fiend, is on Twitter, tweeting people. So, it's not the same as uh, as it was all those years ago. Is it better? Is it worse? Everybody's got their opinion. The point is, Liv Morgan has not been on TV in a very long time. Charlotte, who was the last person that she was seen in the ring with, is on the Raw Survivor Series team. She is the team captain. This could have been a very interesting place to bring Liv Morgan back. Maybe on Raw backstage, Charlotte's walking, walking on by. All of a sudden, Liv appears, maybe with that new look she was teasing. She can thank Charlotte for giving her her extra spark that she needed to change, asked to be on her team at Survivor Series. I mean, that's just one way. I mean, you could think of different ways to reintroduce her as part of the team. But I have to assume. Sarah Logan is on this team for one reason, and one reason only, which is to be a warm body in there, to eat the first fall of the match, and to be eliminated quickly. First fall, second fall, whatever. If that's the case, probably better not to use Liv Morgan in that spot, 
but I would like to still use this as an opportunity to mention Liv Morgan and ask, what are they waiting for? As far as my prediction for the match, I think it's time for the drought to come to an end. Each of the last three years, they have been doing Raw vs. SmackDown at Survivor Series. The Raw ladies have beaten the SmackDown women every single year. I think it's about time the women of SmackDown get a win. If it were up to me, the women of NXT would get a win. I don't see NXT, uh, you know, kind of uh, running, running the board, running the table here at this pay-per-view. I think, frankly, they'll be lucky to get one win on the show. I'll take it. I don't think it's in this match, though. I think it's later on in the card. Uh, you know, the way I'm, I'm going through these matches right now, this is what I think the match order might be. It pr probably isn't. Uh, so, assuming this match happens earlier in the show, later in the night, I think, is when the NXT brand will pick up at least one win, maybe two. I don't think it happens here. And I think you give it to SmackDown. It's about time the drought comes to an end. Sasha Banks going to lead her team to victory. Then we have the Raw Tag Team Champions, the Viking Raiders against the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, The New Day, against the NXT Tag Team Champions, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish of Undisputed Era, coming off that hellacious War Games match last night. A loss for the Undisputed Era, who now falls to 1-2 and two in War Games matches. This should be good, given the uh, the teams involved here. I think this will be uh, this could even be very good. And it could go either way as far as Raw or SmackDown. I do not see Fish and O'Reilly winning I think it's either New Day or Viking Raiders. We know the value that this company puts on New Day, but I think the Viking Raiders are going to pull it out. I think they're getting, you know, they're getting a decent push right now. I think it would be a strong win for them. So I'm going with the Viking Raiders to pick up the win for Monday Night Raw. Then we have the NXT Championship being defended at Survivor Series for the first time ever. Adam Cole, who nearly died last night in the War Games match at the hands of Tommaso Ciampa. Air Raid Crash, off the top of the cage, 12 feet up, down through two tables. Cole puts his title on the line against Pete Dunne, who earned the right to challenge Cole for the championship, winning a triple threat match last night at War Games against Damian Priest and Killian Dane. I don't see the NXT title changing hands. You could certainly, you know, play off play off the story as well. Cole was, was nearly assassinated. <laughs> That's no other word for it. Last night at War Games, he came into this match and not at 100%. And Pete Dunne maybe will never have a better shot at winning the championship than he does tonight at Survivor Series. I just don't see them ready to take the title off of Adam Cole. And I certainly don't see them putting it on Pete Dunne. Not now. So I don't know if that means interference in the match, which would suck. Uh, I don't know. I think if you just take these two guys and put them in a ring for 20 minutes, you'll get gold. But they've kind of backed themselves against the wall here because Adam Cole took a bump last night at the end of that match in the main event that should keep him off television for a fucking month. And now he's got to come back less than 24 hours later and defend his championship on pay-per-view. Against, this is no exhibition. This is one of the, you know, I would say top baby faces on uh, NXT. He's up there, is Pete Dunne. You have a certain expectation with these types of matches, that they're going to go out there and be given time, and it's going to be a of a high enough quality. So there's a lot, you know, he's got a lot riding on his shoulders here. But this guy was nearly killed last night. How does that make Pete Dunne look if Adam Cole just straight up beats him? Which, I don't think he'll just straight up beat him, but I do think he's going to find a way to win. Adam Cole retains the NXT title. Representing Raw. The United States Champion AJ Styles against the Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nakamura, representing SmackDown. Against the NXT North American Champion, representing Undisputed Era, Roderick Strong. This right here should be, could be, I don't want to say will be, the show stealer. Sami Zayn unveiled a new Intercontinental title for Shinsuke Nakamura on SmackDown Friday night to replace the classic version of on the white strap with one that is now back on a black strap that I don't hate this new design. Let me just say that. I don't hate it. And I actually think it looks nicer than most of their titles. In fact, I would go so far as to say that that should have been the design that he unveiled on Friday night. I would have been totally fine if that was the design that they used for the WWE title or the Universal title. 
that would look nice as the design for either one of those top championships rather than the giant logo belt but what did they do instead they took the one belt <laughs> they took the one title design that did not need to be changed in a sea of just trash looking titles not every championship looks like trash but we've seen a lot of trash looking title designs in this company over the over the last several years and they took the Intercontinental Championship and they changed it. And that makes me very sad. That classic IC title was beautiful. They changed the wrong belt. See, I would have changed... If you wanted to change a, like a mid-card title, I would have changed the US title. That's what I would have changed. I would have changed that one before I changed the Intercontinental. But... I, I don't want people to misconstrue me and think that I think it looks bad. I actually think it looks it looks very nice. I, I like, here's what I liked. I like that they kept the word heavyweight in there. It's, it's the small things. It's just one of those little old school things that seems to be lost these days. You know, I'm actually kind of surprised they even bothered keeping it in there. And, and there's, <laughs> there's fewer and fewer heavyweights, I feel like, on the uh, WWE roster now as compared to fucking 30 years ago when these titles had heavyweight on it. So that kind of surprised me, but I like that. If I had one big critique that I would like to see them fix, because I think this would make a huge difference, the title has three globes on that center medallion, on that center plate, one right in the middle, and then they have one on each side of that center plate. Fill those in in blue. I think it would make a world of difference. I would love to see that. I think it would make a world of difference. Give it a little bit of color. I'm not saying make the whole strap blue like the Universal Blueberry Belt, but a little bit of blue on those globes. Perfect. But that's my only real critique of it. I otherwise think it looks fine. I, I just I just didn't see the need to change the IC design. And And because I've seen some people saying this, let me just say this also. No, I don't think this change had anything to do with the fact that it was Cody Rhodes who reintroduced the old Intercontinental title design on the white strap back in, I think it was 2011, or whatever year it was. I don't think that had anything to do with this. People are going to look for conspiracy theories wherever they can find them. And yes, the company can be very petty, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. But no, I don't think that factored into this at all. I don't know that for sure, but if you ask me, I don't think that had anything to do with this. Now, AJ Styles. He's already been announced for a United States Championship match on Raw tomorrow night against Humberto Carrillo. So after four, was it four losses, five losses, Carrillo pins AJ in a trios match. He finally gets a win. One win in a trios match. Then he gets a fluke win on Monday night over Carl Anderson. They could not even give this kid a legitimate win against Carl Anderson. And now Carrillo is getting a championship match. So because of that, I'm going with a win here for AJ Styles. I think you keep him strong heading into a championship match on Monday night. It would kind of be weird if he lost at Survivor Series and then rolled on into Raw to defend his title. Uh, so I'm going to go with AJ Styles. And this could absolutely steal the entire show. Then we have the Raw Women's Champion, Becky Lynch, against the SmackDown Women's Champion, Bayley, and the NXT Women's Champion, Shayna Baszler. I'm all about Becky and Shayna, and I love the sit-down interview that they did on TV a few weeks ago, but Bayley has been lost in the shuffle here. She is the forgotten one. We have the forgotten sons in NXT. Bayley is the forgotten one here in this feud. I could see her winning because of it, because most people aren't expecting it. Most people think, well, is it going to be Becky? Is it going to be Shayna? All of a sudden, Bailey swoops on in and she steals the win. Maybe she rolls up Becky and steals the pin. I'm going to, that'd be the easy prediction to make. I'm going to throw a wild one out there. I don't know how far along she is with her recovery from her finger injury. I think Ronda Rousey returns to help Shayna Baszler beat Becky Lynch. Whether it's just a distraction, whether she gets physically involved, ref bump. I mean, I guess there wouldn't be a disqualification 
in a triple threat match. But I think Ronda Rousey comes back and helps Shayna win. And that's the kickoff to what ends up being Becky against Ronda one-on-one in the match at WrestleMania that we should have had at this year's WrestleMania. Only it's at next year's show, WrestleMania 36. You could also do horsewomen against horsewomen. I see a lot of people still harping about that. You know, when are we going to get the four-on-four? I don't think they would want all the ladies in one match like that at WrestleMania. I would think they would want to spread them out in multiple matches across the show. So you get to have Charlotte in one match, Sasha in, in another, Becky in another. Would they really want to just have all eight women and all four horsewomen just condensed into one match at WrestleMania? I, I think you could save that for a non-WrestleMania pay-per-view. But I think all roads would lead, in this case, to a singles match. If Ronda is ready to come back, Ronda one-on-one against Becky. That's what it should have been this year. So that's my prediction. She gives Shayna the assist. Shayna Baszler for NXT gets the win. Then we have another traditional Survivor Series elimination match with the men. Team Raw, captained by the Tweet Slayer, Seth Rollins, along with Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, Ricochet, and Drew McIntyre against Team SmackDown, led by Roman Reigns. Braun Strowman, King Corbin, Chad Gable, and Mustafa Ali against Team NXT, all the members of which have yet to be announced as I record this. Tommaso Ciampa would, I would think, have to be one. I mean, fuck, if Adam Cole's wrestling on this show, then Tommaso Ciampa should wrestle, should wrestle too. I mean, there's no reason for him not to be in this match. So he might even be the team captain. So Ciampa would be one. Maybe Finn Balor, Matt Riddle, Keith Lee. Dominic Dijakovic, there you go. That would be your five. Now there's been rumors, or a rumor, Triple H. Is he going to possibly be added as a member of Team NXT at Survivor Series? I hope not. I don't think he will. I hope. It's completely unnecessary. It adds nothing to the match at all. Enough. Enough with trotting all of the old guys out there. In a spot like this, the spotlight should be on NXT. On the NXT talent. Not a 50-year-old executive who has no business being in this match in the first place. So hopefully that's just a rumor and nothing more. I'm more intrigued now coming out of War Games last night by the story around Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens came out as the surprise fourth member of Team Champa in the War Games match. Helped them win. Helped them beat the Undisputed Era. But he was out there as part of Team NXT. And now you're going to turn around tonight at Survivor Series and put your trust in this guy that he's going to represent Monday Night Raw and not turn on you guys and help NXT win? So I would be stunned. It would be malpractice. Booking malpractice if they didn't play this up on the show as some kind of storyline that they, you know, the members of Team Raw, they don't trust Kevin Owens. They don't know where he stands. They don't know where his loyalty lies. That, to me, is a more intriguing story. And build it around that. Build it around Kevin Owens. Don't build it around Triple H. There's no business even being in the match. It's a stupid rumor. Hopefully that's all it is. Who wins? I really want to say NXT. I really do. And NXT needs at least one big win on this show. If they get swept out... (laughs) Believe me, you'll be be hearing from me on that live stream when the pay-per-view is over. As strong as they've built up NXT to not give them anything on this show would be ridiculous. Then again, what was it, last year, the year before, SmackDown got totally swept out to see? Oh, well, I can't wait to see what the storyline follow-up is to that. Yeah, nothing. Nada. Zilch. Donut. Goose egg. Hopefully we don't see the same with NXT. I I, I think Team Raw is going to get the win. I'm going to go with Rollins and Owens and Orton and Ricochet and Drew McIntyre. I'm picking Team Raw to walk away with the win here. We have Daniel Bryan challenging The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, for the Universal Blueberry Belt. I hope they kill the red light dead, and they do not use it here in this match. But they used it again on Friday on SmackDown when The Fiend put Bryan in the mandible claw, so I'm not very optimistic about it. And I was thinking about this. When was Daniel Bryan's last big win? I can't even remember. I mean, could he have not have beaten the fucking Miz on Friday night? They had Daniel Bryan in a five-minute match against The Miz. They could not even give him a win over The Miz. The Miz. The Miz doesn't even have a match on the show tonight. Could not even give him a win over The Miz before The Fiend showed up and put him down yet again with the claw. 
And so here we go. Daniel Bryan and, and Bray Wyatt. And Daniel Bryan is still the man responsible for giving Bray Wyatt the best maybe the best match period it, certainly the best singles match i can't rank that above the wyatt family shield match at elimination chamber in 2014 just because i love that match so fucking much it, and it's funny that's back-to-back -back months bray wyatt had the two best matches of his career back-to-back -back months in january and february of 2014 and then he met john cena at wrestlemania and we all know what happened there but up until that point it was a fun ride so this guy gave Bray the best singles match of his life. Now, he's playing a very different character. He no-sells everything. You've got the stupid lighting. It's all gimmicks. But just as a pure wrestling match, they had an excellent match to open that Royal Rumble pay-per-view five years ago. So we know these guys can go out there and have a great match, but that's not what The Fiend is all about. The Fiend is not about going in there and having a great technical masterpiece. So with all the gimmicks and all the tricks, what kind of match can Daniel Bryan have with this guy? We're going to find out. I'll bet you it's good. I'll bet you it's better than what we saw at Hell in a Cell last month. I uh, I think uh, me against uh, Athlete's Foot would be a better match than that Hell in a Cell match. That's a low bar. It's low praise. But I'm picking The Fiend. The Fiend can't lose Wait, I mean, ridiculous to even think that he would lose the championship in his first defense. So Bray Wyatt will win. And Rey Mysterio challenges Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship in a no-holds-barred match. They have been building this for several weeks now. First, Lesnar destroyed Eddie's son, Dominic, on the season premiere of Monday Night Raw, the same night that Rey was due to challenge the Tweet Slayer for his tomato title. Fruit roll-up belt, call it what you will. It will forever be the tomato title to me. Lesnar takes them both out. He made mincemeat out of this kid. Dominic, hat tip to him. He bumped his ass off. Or maybe maybe he was just, maybe he wasn't doing much. Maybe he was just literally being thrown around and he was in writhing and agonizing pain. Uh, but I will, I will give him credit for uh, bumping like a pro that night. So then to avenge the savage beatdown that Brock laid down upon his son, Ray shows up to the first SmackDown on Fox right after Lesnar took the championship from Kofi Kingston, seven seconds, and he brings out Cain Velasquez. Lesnar embarrasses Cain in Saudi Arabia, but then Ray beats the piss out of him with a chair. Then Brock quits SmackDown just so he can get his hands on Rey Mysterio. He quit SmackDown and took the championship to Raw with him just to get his hands on Rey Mysterio. So he shows up on Raw. Dio Madden dies for our sins. Brock just hit him with such a devastating F5, it turned him into Samoa Joe. And Dio has not been seen since. Then Ray shows up, hits Brock with a pipe. And now Paul Heyman says the match will be no holds barred, which means no disqualification. Or at least that's what no holds barred used to mean. That's also what Hell in a Cell used to mean. And we see now that's no longer the case. So I don't trust a damn thing that they say about these stipulations anymore. But I think the story they've told is simple, yet effective. David versus Goliath, if uh, Goliath sat at home reading uh, the Backwoodsman magazine. I think adding the no-holds-barred stipulation was smart, because it gives Ray a fighting chance. There's going to be a lot of people watching this who still can't take it seriously. But there's going to be a lot more people who say, Alright, you know what, now that weapons are allowed... And we've seen Ray on TV beat the shit out of this guy with a chair and beat him down with a pipe, hit him in the knee. It gives this guy a fighting chance. It makes the match that much more uh, believable, and it makes the match that much more competitive. But the end result will be no different. Brock Lesnar retains the WWE title, plain and simple. I do think that we will see Dominic get involved in some way. Uh, maybe Cain Velasquez too, but I think Dominic for sure is going to get involved and uh, maybe he'll try to help his father, but it's going to backfire. And I could see a finish. I could see a finish where Ray is tied up in the ropes or somehow incapacitated. He is watching helplessly as Brock Lesnar murders his son until Ray can take no more and he is forced to quit. Not saying that's the best finish, but I could see I could see a finish. Along those lines, it's the guy's son. And if they don't want to beat Ray straight up, 
And I don't know why you wouldn't. I mean, Brock's beating everybody else straight up. 1F5, boom, see you later. Why would Rey Mysterio be any different? But I could see that being a finish. Playing off people's emotion. Getting Dominic involved. Either way, the end result is the same. Brock Lesnar keeps his championship. And that's the rundown. That's the Survivor Series card for 2019. I will be going live immediately after the show is over on YouTube for a full review. Full uh, live stream on the channel. So if you haven't already done so, please hit that sub button and join me. That should be around uh, 11 o'clock after Survivor Series. Going to be a good time. Hopefully I'll see you all there.